Hey everybody, welcome to our Learn to Code epilogue in which we are going to take a look at a few best practices and also some resources that will help you out as you move along in your foray into the programming world. Um, we're going to take a look at four things here in this video and then the resources are going to be things that are going to be addressed in the actual posts. So we're not going to talk about them in the video at all. Uh, there are going to be links to sites and maybe some books and stuff. So just watch this for some best practices and uh, we'll get to the resources in the text. So to get started, the most important thing that we haven't really talked about yet is commenting your code. You want to do it well and we're going to take a look at how to do that, um, specifically just how to actually make a comment and also how to comment in the best ways possible. Uh, first of all, you'll see here I have four comments that are reminding me what I'm talking about. and the first one is how to comment well, and I and that's a single line comment. I put two slashes, write whatever I want to comment, and then on the next line, you'll see it goes back to normal. Now, if I have a slash and a star, I can start commenting, and I can keep commenting on as many lines as I want until we get a, another star slash. So it's kind of like HTML tags. You have an opening tag, which uh, for the comment is uh, forward slash star, and then and then the ending one is star forward slash. And then you that way you can have multi-line comments if you need them. It's also really useful if you have a piece of code that you don't like. Let's say you have a function called wash car and you don't really want to have that operational for some time. You can just comment that out and then it's not it will not be uh, parsed when the code is run. So it's the, those uh, those uh, multi-line comments are generally more useful for just uh, kind of abs just removing code, uh, a piece of code from your actual uh, fr from the full code, uh, without having to delete it, so you don't have to get rid of it. Now, if you're writing good comments, you really want to explain why you're doing something rather than how. If you have a function that is wash car, and then and then the uh, variable you're pass passing it is uh, the car you're going to wash. It's pretty obvious what that function does because you named it well. Someone's going to look at that and be like, oh, this is the car washing function. So you don't really need to say this is the car washing function. It's obvious. Um, if you have a function that's not named well or that needs to have an abbreviated name for some reason and it doesn't explain uh, obviously what it does, then that's a circumstance where you might want to put in, you know, how this is working or what this is supposed to do. Um, but for the most part, you want to explain why you're making the choices you make. You might um, you might make a choice in this wash wash car function that uh, that that may seem strange, or you may just uh, make a choice that that uh, is unusual. But you needed to make that choice because it it uh, solved a problem that was happening somewhere else, or it's a problem that you ran into. The information you want to convey in your comments is both for you and for any other programmer who, ever, who, who will ever be looking at this in the future. And, and so you want to make sure that what you put in those comments actually tells you something useful. If you know how to code, you're going to read it and understand the code just as well as if you're reading it in English. If you, what you're not going to understand necessarily is why certain choices were made. So make sure you explain what you're doing. Um, in a way that will actually help you. Uh, so you know why you did it and you can jump right back in or someone else can jump right into your code and understand why you made the choices you made. Now we're going to look at why you shouldn't use eval. The eval function is short for evaluate and what it does is it evaluates a string as a variable. So if you have a, if you had a variable called number of apples that's set to let's say three and you wanted to evaluate that, or you wanted to actually get the contents of it, you just really need to use the variable name. And you could alert that number of apples. Or, if you wanted to use eval, you could, call, you could give it um, a string that says number of apples, and it will say, okay, well, I need to evaluate a number of apples variable. And this is a really cumbersome way of doing it, so this is not a situation where you would actually want to use eval. Um, because it's actually harder than doing it any other way. But let's say you don't know what it is the number of. Um, 
So you ha you know the variable is going to start with number of, but you don't know it's necessarily going to be apples. So we have another variable called food type. And currently we'll set that to apples. Now we might also have number of oranges, five, and number of star fruits, two. And you don't want to have to go in and change this because it's so complicated. So you would go and change this to instead star fruits, and then it would evaluate to star fruits instead of apples without having to go in and make the change in your alert box. Um, that's sort of a reason you might want to use eval. There are actually more compelling reasons out there that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. But what eval does is, you know, aside from what we just showed you, is slow down your code. You use it too many times, you're going to have really slow code. So don't use eval. Instead, use arrays or objects to get the job done for the most part. Um, you're pretty much going to... Oh, we don't want that. Um, <laughs> had an extra semicolon there. You don't want to you don't want to be using eval because it's going to make things nice and slow, so don't. And uh, and like I said, objects and arrays better. We're going to take a look at objects and arrays next. So the other thing that you can do better, we talked about making a new array by calling it you know whatever you want and then saying new array, and then you can even put items in here like one, two, three, four, five. Um, alternatively, what you could do is just, oops, thanks TextMate, um, is just put some brackets in here, and then you can do one, two, three, four, five, and then you don't even need the array constructor. Um, so that's one way to go about that. If you're making an object, this is a type, a data type we haven't talked about. It's a little bit more complex. Um, if you're making an object, you can do var my object or whatever you want to call it, and then set it to two brackets. And you can start filling in your object here and say um, item one is apples, item two is bananas. Not typing so well right now. <laughs> item three is oranges. And then you would reference that object by saying my object dot item one. Probably should make these lowercase there. Because that's also a best practice when naming variables. Um, so basically what you have here is is an object that was created very easily like that. The alternative way is to go my object equals new object and have the object constructor and then start adding things to it like my object dot item one equals apples. That's the long way to do it. The short way to do it is what we just looked at. And objects are very similar to arrays, only you get to name things a little bit more easily. So those are, those are faster ways of making arrays and objects. Lastly, before we go, JavaScript doesn't always require that you use a semicolon. You don't have to. Sometimes you can just move on to the next line of code, and uh, JavaScript will be like, oh, whatever, I know what's going on. But you should always use your semicolons. It's like not ending and it's like not ending a sentence with a period. And that's confusing to people. And so while it might not be confusing to JavaScript at all times, it will be confusing to other people because they don't necessarily know when the line of code is ending. And also, uh, it might actually be confusing to JavaScript. It could cause problems. So it's better practice to just use the semicolon at the end of each sentence of your code. Type in a new variable and set it to whatever, put a semicolon at the end. If you're writing a function like wash car, which car? Oh boy. And you put some code in that, like do this, put a semicolon at the end of it. You don't need to necessarily put a semicolon at the end of your curly braces here, but you can. You won't see that a lot though. So that's really the last best practice we have. One thing I'm going to mention, because you may have questions about it, is how I'm writing my code. Now when I write a function, wash car, we're not, we're not going to talk about the car. I put my curly braces down here. I find that it's much easier to read the code that way. 
Some people prefer to have it up here because it's an extra line, and I think they're wrong. I used to do it this way, and I found it much harder to read my code. Um, I find that it's a lot easier to just use that extra line and put the girly brace on the next line. Um, lots of people will disagree with that. Lots of people will agree with that. Whatever you feel comfortable doing is what you should do. Don't listen to me and put it on the second line if you don't like that. If you do like it, though, or you really don't care, um, I'll like you more if you put it on the second line. Because when I read your code, I'll think, oh, this is so much more readable. But really, it doesn't matter in the long run. You can do whatever you like. Although some languages do have best practices for where to put the curly brace, so you may want to actually read about that and find out. Anyway, that's all I've got for you for best practices. Thanks for tuning in to these Learn to Code lessons. It's been fun, and we will hopefully have some more stuff in Lifehacker Night School in the near future. And also be sure to check out the rest of the post for additional resources on how you can learn how to code in more intermediate and advanced ways.